Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse and welcome to a new Crusader Kings 3 campaign with the Prince of Darkness mod. It's been a while since we played Crusader Kings, but I figured it was time with the release of the Royal Courts about a month ago and all. And we are playing as a Ventru, Julia Anastasia, and the clan Ventru, the self-proclaimed rulers of the Knight world, the Ventru are the regal lords and ladies of the night. They have long been one of the proudest lines of vampires, working hard to maintain a reputation of honor, genteel behavior and leadership. A sense of noble, noblesse oblige has long pervaded the clan, accompanied by a genuine belief of the Vent that the Ventru knows what is best for everyone. A recent string of setbacks have plagued the Blue Bloods with the fall of Rome, the loss of France as one of their strongholds. Still, Clan Ventru rules the medieval knight as it should be, and Clan Ventru's dominance is not negotiable. Make them learn. And that's a pretty reasonable way of describing Clan Ventru. They are the very noble vampires and they they decide that they should lead because they know best and everyone else is just followers. So we are Julia and Tasia and we are Queen of East Francia which is uh, basically part of the vampire Holy Roman Empire because we are a vassal of Hardestat who is the emperor of the Thieves of the Black Cross which well is basically the Holy Roman Empire for vampires. And uh, that means we are a vassal, which uh, we're gonna have to live with. At least it's at least we're a vassal to a Ventru and not some gangrel or, God forbid, a Bruja. But eventually we are gonna overthrow him. And uh, well, I mean, we know best. We should rule. We are a Ventru after all. He might be too, but we know better. The daughter of the Roman Republic is a Ventru of another age, one where her clan was the guardian of the Eternal Senate, a utopia in the ruthless world of the Canaanites. It was Julia's perfect world. Every Ventru had the right of speech and voting power was irrespective of age or sex. The laws of the Senate were to become the tradition of the clan for the next millennia. Then Camilla and his decadent madness came, followed by Hardestat and his ruthless ambition. From her princedom in Frankfurt, Julia has lost hope for, uh, of bringing back the clan to its roots. Idealism might still be the path of Clan Ventrue's future. You can't let Hardestat or worse, Camilla dictate the future of the Clan Ventrue. You must fight for the Senate and for the Republic! Yeah, so basically our goal is gonna be to overthrow Hardestat, take control of, uh, of the Thieves of the Black Cross, and then probably just march south and take out Camilla and reform the Eternal Senate. And um, along the way we're gonna make an awesome uh, court with all the regal and beauty stuff that Aventru would, well, should have. So let's just start the game and unclick that. Okay, so this is East Francia, our small little kingdom inside Feats of the Black Cross. Actually it's quite a large part of Feats of the Black Cross. But we are still quite a bit weaker than Hardestad. Yeah, he's got five times the number that we do. And I know Champions does a lot in uh, Princess of Darkness, but he still has more champions than we do. And they're likely stronger as well, since he has a larger pool of characters to dig champions from. But we still have ways to, well, pad our numbers a little bit. First of all, we can find a spouse to get a strong alliance. And we can also spread out a little bit within the feeds and outside of the feeds to grow our power base a little bit. And we can also wait until he's in a war and or some rebellion or something so we can like use that as an opportunity to strike. And uh, overall we'll find a way to do it, it's fine. And before unpausing we also have some character lore to read. Julia was born in Rome to a wealthy family in the 5th century BCE. She was sympathetic to the plebeian cause, spoke on their behalf and even fell in love with a plebeian. Speculation pla uh, places her political acumen, re rhetoric skill, sense of duty, charisma, strong will, common sense and compassion as valid reasons for her sire's attention. While Julia was working for the good of all the Eternal Senate in Rome, by 264 BCE war with Carthage started an event that has profoundly affected the idealistic Roman. Over the century-long conflict, Julia watched her beloved senate descend, descend into madness as Rome's un unopposed growth meant wealth and power for those who could grab it first. 
The dream of equality for all of true died, and with it, Julia turned, turned her back on Rome and disappeared for centuries. Her journey came to an end when her last hope, a Nosferatu elder named Angiwar, met her in a castle just north of Frankfurt. While he did not possess the information that, he, that she sought, the two formed a pact of mutual advantage. Under her stewardship, ambitious young Ventru, who wished to fulfill her vision of a reborn eternal senate, flocked to Frank Frankfurt. Julia pro Julia's proponent labeled themselves as Antatians in her honor and espoused equality among Ventru. In the opposition to the medieval and ruthless Black Cross, and look to her, to her as their protector and guide. Yeah, so we're not a big fan of Hanestad because he is uh, well, he's a tyrant. So we we're gonna make a better country, a well, a Roman country, and reborn or reform the. Um, Eternal Republic, which we can do if, as long as we are an independent ruler, um, the Black Thieves are big enough. You completely control Roma, and the Thieves of the Black Cross title must be yours. So, before we go to Rome and all that and remake the Eternal Republic, we need to overthrow Hadestat and take his title. Which should be easy enough. Well, we'll do that soon enough. We'll just play nice for a while and eventually we'll overthrow him and become Empress of the Thieves. Which is gonna be great. And um, yeah, we're in no rush because we also have a royal court to... Well, to pimp out. Right now it's very dark and empty and boring looking. But we are... Uh, Working on the grandeur, it's growing as it is, which is gonna be great. We're about to get grandeur 3, and we're spending a lot on these. I'm not sure we're gonna lower it right now, because, well, we are, we are gaining money, which is just fine. And, uh, well, we do get a bunch of bonuses from just letting these be as they are. And since we can't afford it, we're gonna leave it. And we don't have any artifacts right now, but that'll change as well once we can afford, let's see, uh, the common antiquarians. Because these antiquarians can make artifacts. We can also, with the help of Prestige, let's see, which is one reason I really liked her as this playthrough. She has the d diplomat tree all filled out, so we can buy... Artifact claims, which is gonna cost a lot of uh, prestige, but we're making a bunch of it and we're gonna make stuff that give us more prestige. So hopefully we're gonna make a shit ton of prestige just by claims on artifacts and go to war over them because, well, it's fun to have artifacts. So we're gonna try to get some. So our skills are pretty good. We have a reasonable diplomacy and a pretty good, uh, I say reasonable, a very good diplomacy, a reasonable stewardship. The rest are kind of meh, but we're a very good fighter, which is excellent. Um, and speaking of stats, like a, let's have a look at our council. Are you really? No, you're not the best one we have. We can put our son here, which... Uh, Here's our marshal though, so do we have any better marshals? We don't. And we only gain two learning from this. It would be nice to have since... Uh, actually, this is piety. Right, this is the chaplain, not the chancellor. So... We don't care too much. We are making so much piety as it is, so... 11 is fine. We got the chancellor. And he seems to be the best person for the job. This is our uh, our steward and the the Nosferatu that the Lord was talking about, Angiwar, or how you pronounce it. But he's our best friend and steward, and you are fine at your job. We could put put our son here, but as we said, he is our marshal, and he can stay there because he is absolutely the best the best person for the job. Now this person, our spy master, you are horrible. I don't think you are the right person for the job. 
And unfortunately, everyone else is kind of terrible. Like, he is super angry because he wants a spot on the court, but like, look at this guy. Just be happy you can be a champion. Seriously, he is horrible. And so is she. She is happy that she's on the council, but I mean, she is still really pissy. Especially since we hold her the jure duchy, which is... Yeah, she's never going to be happy with us. So we're just going to put the Count Rolf, the black bishop, over here. He is a very good person for intrigue. And he's, it's fitting because he is a Nosferatu. And they are like traditionally very sneaky and good at that sort of thing. Okay, so we have the spouse that we need to. And... We need the we need a strong alliance since that will help us overthrow our our liege Hardestat. So let's sort for alliance power. And this guy is pretty good. He has the Eastern Lords, which is a pretty strong country. He has a lot of champ uh, no not champions. He has a lot of uh, soldiers and a bunch of champions. So he is very good. He's the strongest alliance we can form, it seems, from at least the auto uh, auto sort for strongest alliance. But I trust them because uh, this guy has fewer champions and fewer levies. This is even fewer. So I think we're going to marry this guy. Mostly because we want the alliance. It's helpful that he's also a Ventru. And uh, it is, however, a little bit unfortunate that he is... Uh, well, that he has a title. It would be nice to, like, marry his child or something. Because then we could get the alliance and have someone on our council. Because since he is a king, he's not going to be able to be, um, like, a ruling spouse. But we're fine with this. Going to get some prestige as well, which is going to be nice. We also have some uh, building to do. Because I had a look at this before, so I cheated. And I want the Princedom, because that's a good amount of tax, we get some levies, we get some prestige and renown, we got some development growth, which is all really good. In the future we would like a Grand Temple, that is a lot of money, but that's a lot of tax. And we get a bunch of other stuff, which would be great. I'm not entirely sure that the, that the uh, tax justifies this cost. But maybe, I don't know. This would be 750 months for this to pay for itself. And that is a long time. That's like, what is that, 100 years? Yeah, maybe that's not worth it. <laughs> okay, um, I also plan on... Like, we're not going to do this now because we have to finish our principal town first. Uh... But I was thinking, like, influence the underworld. We'll tank our popular opinion, but we'll get some money. I would like this as well, to get the extra prestige. Because basically, we just want money and prestige. Because money would allow us to hire people for our court. And prestige, well, will let us uh, get claims on artifacts, which would be nice. Okay. So I think we're ready to unpause because we haven't gotten the how we hunt yet. So we're not going to do that. Oh, we got a bunch of alliances that we're just going to pop. Because most of these are like vassals and uh, siblings and stuff like that. That can either help on o overthrowing our liege or just prevent them from... Uh, rising up and also protect us if some, someone attacks because I don't think m most of those are gonna want to uh, it's not people we're gonna attack anyway so now I think we're ready to unpause we're a few champions but do we though how many do we have one two three four five 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, we, we have. They're just very bad. <laughs> oh my god, they're bad down here. 
Like, this is kind of where I draw the line. About 15, 14. It's still pretty bad for a vampire, but... It feels like they... It's easy to get better than that. And why did the... This music got so loud. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, so that's a little better. The music is just very varying in uh, CK3 on how loud it is. Some some musics are like incredibly loud and some you barely hear on the same volume that you had to adjust to. Especially when you declare wars. That is just nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna say that we are the heir to the thieves. Which would be great if he just collapsed and died right now. Uh, right, we're waiting on that. And... Right, so the heir for East Frisia. I'm thinking we we nominate Anguar. Because we have our pact with him. I don't care, that's fine. It just feels right to give him the heirship. Give him the inheritance. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause. We're gonna have a lot of pop-ups. Because we have... Uh, oh, this as well. But we have... Uh, Proposed and sent a bunch of alliance questions, so a lot of things gonna happen. The undisputed heart of Clan Ventru, Germany, is firmly in the lands of Hardestad. Still, even his rule isn't unchallenged by pretenders like Julia and Tasha of the west, uh, western Germany of the elusive Ilse Rein Reiniger of Bavaria. To the south, the usurpers of Clan Tremere have a precious position with the vicious Sinche of eastern Europe, closing fast on their strongholds. Their defensive accord with the mighty Ventru is perhaps their only lifeline. Close, close by li lies Alexander of Paris, the exiled prince of France, a powerful vampire by his own right, but alone politically. Hardestad must act quickly, quelling the ambitions of his chilled, child Jurgen, uh, destroying Julia and Ilse's power bases and securing his eastern fronts with or without Tremere's help. Germany would be the crown jewel of Clan Ventru or Burn Trying. Rome is a fading memory of the future. <laughs> okay, that got weird. Rome is a fading memory. The future is here. Okay, so our prey. Okay, so since we are a Ventru, we don't feed on the homeless or the poor or anything gross like that. Uh, so I think we're gonna go for like hey we're we're married excellent okay go away so like i said we're not gonna go for like poor people or criminals or whatever gross people we are um let's let's do like words of negotiation and prey on diplomats maybe or maybe stewards or scholars Let's go for Diplomats, since, well, we're even true. It just feels right that we should have noble diplomatic people. Just look at us. Of course we're gonna go for Diplomats. And we're gonna go for Humans, because I didn't even know this was an option. But we're not gonna go all in Diablery. <laughs> that's, that's a little too hardcore. And... Uh, we are gonna go with... Wait, what do we have? I mean, knowledge is pretty good. We're not good with deceit or violence. We can go with charm. Charm is pretty good. We can do it as a siren, uh, which makes us comely, which is very nice. Or we could have a cult, which is also very fun. But I think we're gonna go with, with uh, siren. So we can just lure people into us and uh, we get a diplomacy point and we become comely, which is very nice. Makes us prettier and uh, gives us some attraction opinion, which is great. So the primogen mechanics, which is new with the, with the courts. So as long as we are a kingdom or above, we have, the, uh, we have access to the courts and we can... Uh, uh, we can hire a bunch of primogen from each of the clans, which is basically the like the head of the clan, head of each clan in our kingdom. So that's uh, gonna cost money, and um, 
and uh, prestige. So we're gonna do that when we have a surplus of prestige and money. But it's gonna be very good when we can afford it. Okay, so click through all of these. We just need these to stop. So <laughs> just yeah, a couple more. There, there we go. Is that the last one? I think it is. Okay, so our story so far. Lady Antasia, you stand strong in your exiled home in Germany, but your heart aches for the triumphant return to Rome. Clam and True has fallen far since its noble roots in the Eternal Senate, and you are, you are the only one that can stop Hardestat and Camilla from turning your beloved clan into a mockery of itself. This endeavor will, will take time, though, but you, re you recently found a surprising ally in your, in your quest, the Nosferatu An Angiwar, is a strange one, fond of fanciful tales, but he has already proven proven to be a worthy friend and even more worthy champion for your cause. With your combined might, there is still hope for the true ideals of Rome. Yeah, so is our friend and steward and right now heir to uh, East Francia, because if we die, at least we can trust that he reforms the Eternal Senate. He might not be a Ventru, but he's an honorable Ventru. I'm gonna say. So, let's have a look at our court. Oh, we already have a little court event here. A pool of blood is congealing under the feet of Johan, a diplomat sent by my ally Count Henrich of Wolfstag Sopor Sopron. Some guy I'm allied with. Didn't really pay attention to who we allied, but a bunch of people. The immense quantity is soaked up by my fine carpet. I can only assume he has been bleeding on this spot for hours, if not longer. Dude, get a turtican on it or something. My apologies for this mess. I was uh, defenestrated by a dwarf trying to rob me in an inn on my journey to Frankfurt. However, as the rapscallion cushioned my fall, the diplomatic visit can continue. It is. It will still be days until my bloodlust is fatal. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a pretty fun uh, event to start off. Um, he will bleed even more. You will have to buy a new. Uh, you will have to buy a new carpet. Or we can. Uh, uh, we can talk now, but your leash is paying for my carpet. <laughs> I mean, that does seem fitting. He is gonna be mad, but I mean, he's he's fine. He's, it's not like he's a very strong ally or something like that. He's a count. And I'm gonna say he can pay for our carpet. Because, I mean, if you send a, a, a bleeding guy to come and bleed on our carpet, you better pay for it. And we get a bunch of court grinder, which is excellent. Because that means we are at grandeur uh, rank 3 now. Which manage royal guard counselor task. I don't know what that is. Uh, increases the control and accounted by... Oh, okay. I guess that's the... The... Uh, martial... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. The martial activity. So, we can hold court every five years. Which we're gonna do. Because it can bring us a bunch of benefits. And it's fun. Wait, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in your own court? Okay, whatever. Sitting on my throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors of, doors of the hall. A stream of people file in, some lining up in front of my throne, while others move out of the way so they can simply observe the proceedings. After several moments, all, moment, all movement in the chamber have ceased, all faces turn towards mine expectantly. In front of me, I count three petitioners lined up in an orderly row, waiting for me to call on them. So, first one, please. A thin, raggedy peasant stands before me, gawking at the opulence of my throne room. Obviously distracted, I call him, call him to get his attention. Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I, uh, my village in Frankfurt was hit by a blight this year. We lost only our crop, by, but our seed, too. We have nothing. We shall starve without your help. Glancing around my throne room again, he adds, Surely you have wealth to spare. Okay, so we can get crop sharing, which is development growth and popular opinion, which is very nice. Let us establish crop sharing system with neighboring villages, which doesn't cost us anything. Is this just because we have good... Yeah, nice. 
Uh, you will have funds, you need to rebuild, get placed. Please, peasants, your service will, will repay your debt. And plowshares to soar, so we get, so we make them soldiers. But now, let's uh, do crop sharing. That seems great. We get some development growth in our capital and popular opinion growth, which is great. And a hero of the frontier. Over the last few days, I've heard tell of a mighty hero of the peasantry who has won the hearts, of, uh, hearts and minds of the common people uh, through incredible deeds and matchless bravery. This hero, who goes by the name of Tiberius, oh, a very strong name. Oh, are you a vampire? No, you're not, but you are of the Eternal Senate. Oh, you're a very good, good uh, fighter. We might ghoul or sire you, probably, just to have you as a champion. Probably ghoul. So, this hero who goes by the name of Tiberius has been defending the small folk from the Saxon raiders and now has now traveled uh, the way to Frankfurt to seek an audience with you. There is no doubt that Tiberius is a great hero, however, my court are adamant that I do not ele uh, I do not elevate commoners beyond their station. Well, I'm not gonna give him like titles and stuff, but or land, but I will gladly make him a a knight. Ooh, that's a lot. So I gain a bunch of levies and popular opinion, some prestige, lose a bunch of money. Does this but that doesn't Oh we only honor him, we doesn't make him a uh, champion. And uh, you imprison Tiberius uh, Tiberius Macedonian. No, I don't think so. I think we're gonna um, make him a knight because he's very good and as a ghoul he's gonna be even better he's even a pretty good well he's not a good marshal but he's got some pretty good traits but yeah let's make him a a knight gonna cost a bunch of money but we have some pretty weak knights right now at least the bottom end so he's gonna be good we are actually just gonna Oh, well, we'll get back to him. My son, Senator Agrippa, and my grandson, Senator Gisheller, stands in front of me bickering, as usual, about the best politics for our county. Country. War is the only way, uh, only way to make a country rich and powerful, states Agrippa, assertedly. Only in peace can a country grow and prosper, retorts Gisheller. This time, however, they expect me to take their, their position. Our people are proud warriors, not cowardly peasants. Only peace can bring us prosperity. Oh, we get some grandeur, which is nice. Lose a lot of levy size, but get a lot of holding taxes, which is also nice. And we only do what I decide, which is pretty fitting. We wouldn't lose much from just having them lose 10. They're very happy with us. And we're not doing this because that's unnecessary stress. And I don't want to lose taxes. I do like this just to... No, wait. I don't want to lose that much levies either. Just... We only do what I decide. So, whatever. And uh, that's a pretty successful court held, I gotta say. So. Wait. Yeah, there he is. So, you are our, one of our champions. So, let's ghoulify you because that's gonna make you stronger it's gonna make you live longer and um, that means you're gonna be a, a champion longer as long as you survive that is oh uh, we're gonna untick these because well we can ask him to increase uh, the development in our capital and stuff but i don't think that's ever gonna happen because we are rivals right i think we're rivals or relationship rivals yeah so he's generally not gonna like us. So odds are he's not gonna give us shit. So uh, we're gonna get this. So what can, what are our options? We can get potent. No, we can't. We already maxed out potence. Uh, we maxed out fortitude. We have all specs, which, which is great. It will help us find the right resonance while we hunt. And... Uh, Okay, we've already done all the things we've we have available. 
Because we can't pick these even, even if we take potence, because these will be locked if we don't pick celerity, then we can't use celerity. So I guess we just go for these for now. And I guess diplomacy, because that is what we're going to get most experience from. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of dread because we are compassionate. Actually, we should have a look at that. Ooh, monthly prestige per night, though. That's pretty good. Because we're trying to have a lot of knights and we want a lot of prestige. So that would be good. Uh, we don't care about that. I mean, we're not going to go down the family tree, so to say. So we're not going to go down this. So let's go firm hand. And go for the extra prestige because we want a lot of prestige. So let's speed this up and let's just... Oh, what's going on? Okay, so he's trying to grant us a bunch of vassals. Which I am happy with. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a big gain. Syringia. Um, Anhalt. Are you just giving us all of the land? Um, you are Swabia. What? What is this? Marienburg. Marburg. Gladly. And oh, Harold Settler. Okay, I know who this guy is. He is fucking creepy. <laughs> like. He's the psychopath vampire, isn't he? Uh, a member of the Circle of the Three Revelation, loose collection, a collective of Malkavian seers, philosophers and mystics, Harold Settler was a strong defender of the sal Salubri when the Tremere started destroying them. Using the little influence he had to shelter and protect them wasn't, uh, wasn't enough and he grew more desperate as the Tremere purging gained traction. Harold pleaded to any spiritual ent entities, even gods, to help him and one of them answered. That night, Harold Setter, Settler was born as a mockery of everything he was hold, held there. Future canon, becoming a willing pawn of the entity known as the Worm, Harold will become one of the most horrible canines to walk the night. His experience will truly reach the global scale, leaving untold pain and despair in its wake. Yeah, so he's a fucking sicko. <laughs> and I forgot that he just hang, hung out over here so okay he can be my vessel and we just grew a lot well thanks <laughs> why would you give us that oh shit you've grown a lot but so should we have um we should have gotten a bunch from from our our uh um, vassals. There's a word. <laughs> Breach of the Masquerade. A Ansgar saw the Countess Claudia Charfle, um violate the silence of blood, revealing Claudia Schoenecht as a vampire. The Masquerade has been breached. What shall we be done with Ansgar? So you are a little shitty count that hates me. Um... We can. Ansgar gains a bunch of stress. 10% chance masquerade will exposure will increase. I don't like that. And this is Ansgar. Yeah. I mean, we could just try to make him forget. Thing is, I don't want to spend too much blood because we are compassionate, which means. We gained, I think that's the one that makes us gain stress from, well, murdering people and feeding on people. So we can't feed freely, really, because it's going to cause us a lot of stress. Yeah, like that. Oh, this is just 18. It's not that bad. There, there we go. 36 if we want to feed him, feed on him. Yeah, so we can't really like, go nuts on feeding so I don't want to spend too much blood so let's just ignore him just 10% chance that we uh, get some exposure and that is risk the exposure there's the word 
Uh, it's hard to speak sometimes. So we can get a weak hook, hook if we forgive her. We can imprison her. Which is not that likely. Oh, 50-50. But I don't think it's worth it. She's just some no-name count that we don't really care about. So let's just forgive her. We get a hook. That's fine. Hooks are nice. Oh, and... I heard good things about you and I'm interested in starting a written conversation. I hope that this letter finds you willing for I am awaiting your swift reply. Hmm. Who are you? You are some ruler over at... Um, where are you? Over in Bulgaria. Huh. Okay, well... Let's... Uh, well, we don't really need to make a friend with some random um, Hungarian. That's what I said. Ah, whatever. So, let's just grab the prestige. It's gonna be great. We can speed up now, just let some time pass. Are you... Oh! You're gifting an artifact to me. Chronicles of Shadow. Ooh. Gains a bunch of P.A.D. per powerful vassal on the council. Get an ex extra court grandeur. Oh, except. So, let's go have a look at our artifacts. That is our first artifact. The Chronicles of Shadow. Good. We're gonna get us a little bit of this. Not a lot, I imagine, since uh, we don't have that many on our court, right? Right? Uh, we have three persons. So, 0. 0.6 isn't bad. It's free piety not against that at all and there was one thing i was gonna do before ending this episode because we are getting there i don't remember what that was uh right we are gonna start a faction against our liege create a no not liberty uh liberty is the not what we're doing create a claimant faction and we are claiming the thieves of the black cross and do that and i mean right now it's only us we might get some people to join i don't know we'll see it doesn't hurt to just have it there oh and she wants an alliance the bavarian lady yeah i'm fine with that good okay with that we haven't advanced that much but there was a lot a lot of things to do in the first uh, in the first start of this campaign but we uh, we got a lot of things done and i think it's gonna be a really fun campaign so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this first episode if you did consider giving me a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye bye